Ewe bwana umeinuliwa juu sana Mwana kondoo wa Mungu uliyemwaga damu kwa sababu ya dhambi zetu Heshima nguvu mamlaka hekima na utajiri ni zako zote haleluya
Well, praise the Lord, glory to God, and welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and are glad in this day. I just want to welcome you to today's program uh, with apologies that we are late uh, with one hour because I've been in a strategic meeting with the leaders in the body of Christ uh, and the internet because uh, you all know what is going on in the nation and uh, a lot of challenges that the nation is uh, going through, especially even the church and uh, leaders, uh, we needed to meet, you know, leaders from different umbrella bodies on Zoom, in the internet, to make decisions and be able to help uh, the matter that is going on as we support government and at the same time give guidance to the pastors, at the same time give guidance to the church and believers. Uh, and uh, I'm sure those communications will be coming to you later. Uh, so that's a meeting that was uh, delayed and because we come on this one live. So please accept my apologies that we were not able to come in live at 10 in the morning. Well, uh, we'll make plans in the future when there's this kind of delay uh, so that we can be articulate and strategic, praise God. Particularly on the topic that I want to deal with the place of strategy in the ministry. Um, uh, this is very important. Glory to God. Wow. Let's pray together and just begin a brief session today. We're just going to make it, you know, a few minutes, uh, maybe 15 minutes, and then we uh, we can be back later uh, to share much more. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. We honor your holy name. We ask, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will that is already established in heaven be done on the earth. And Father, help the church and God's people and believers and all those that are tuned in today. Father, we can learn from your word and learn from you in ways that our lives will be better and ministry will be better too, to the glory of God. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Well, today in the Apostolic Nuggets, uh, I just want to share the place of strategy in ministry and I want to read a scripture in the book of Proverbs. You know, B book of Proverbs is an amazing book. Uh, is a book that has wisdom. In fact, I encourage people in the marketplace and indeed even in the ministry, uh, whether in the church or working outside the four walls of the church. This book of Proverbs is a direct manual. You need to read it over and over again because it has direct wisdom, counsel, you know, it's not prophetic, it's not prophecy, it's words of wisdom and very practical things that are useful for life. And Proverbs 20 and verse 18 uh, says something. Plans are established by counsel, by wise counsel, wage war. Glory to God. So plans are established by counsel. You know, counsel is those specific words that will give you guideline and guide uh, that this is what to avoid, this is what you could do. And, you know, uh, before you can make any plan, you know, planning is saying uh, among the three, four, five things, what things can we do first, followed by which thing, and, you know, make those plans and put strategic people uh, to do, play specific roles so that uh, it can be accomplished what you know your goal is and uh, so the matter of plans being established by counsel the bible says when you get wise counsel then you can wage war in other words you can win in a battle and right now of course as we're dealing with COVID-19 that's why certain strategic church leaders and leaders of our bodies have been meeting so that we can uh, come up with wise counsel and then we can help the church to wage war in this particular time glory to God and Proverbs 21 and verse 5 uh, many many scriptures the Bible says the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty so plans of the diligent uh, and uh, plans of the diligent uh, lead to uh, to plenty a prosperity look if as a believer and as a leader in ministry, put strategic, specific, good plans, guess what will happen? 
you get into prospera prosperity, a prosperous future, and plenty, a lot of stuff, glory to God, and increase. So prosperity and success in life doesn't just come because either you belong to the right family or probably you're connected to the right people, but plans of a hard worker. Uh, but uh, everyone who does things hastily and so forth without a plan, you will lead to poverty. And uh, we can now see how most ministries and churches are in a lot of challenge and a lot of trouble. Why? Because there weren't plans in place. Particularly plans on savings, probably. Plans on how you can handle your finances. You know, I'm sure those families that have had savings, right now they're able to provide food and rent and be able to advance. But those who probably believed that I don't have enough resources, and so I can't save. And because of those mental beliefs, therefore made no plans, and now I'm in a lot of trouble. The Joseph principle in Egypt uh, that he gave to Pharaoh uh, is still workable because those plans and strategy that Joseph received, received from the Lord. And the same God is a God we serve. And so you can see how important it is to hear from God and put these strategies in place so that you can wage war. And not only that, it can lead to prosperity. It can lead to great success. Praise the name of Jesus. And you know, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, very famous verse, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we need knowledge, a working knowledge with the practical steps so that we can be able to handle the things that come our way, glory to God. And so it's important to have knowledge and to know the will of God in matters of life, glory to God, and especially ministry, how is ministry done, and therefore they need to be strategic. Listen, lack of strategy is the biggest challenge in ministry uh, at any one given time. Look, the devil is the still the same devil, you can overcome him and defeat him, glory to God. You know, financial challenges will always be there, glory to God. People skills and challenges, how to handle people, all those challenges are there all the time. But guess what? If you can be able to be strategic, that you strengthen that which is weak, those areas that you are weak in your life and ministry, you strengthen them by studying, getting counsel from those who have gone ahead and who seem to have something that is workable, ask also from the Lord, you know, and indeed the Lord also speaks through those who have gone ahead of us. Look, it will be important, and at the same time, these strategies, remember, is prophetic vision also. It's the same family, strategies from prophetic vision, because Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no prophetic vision, you know, people perish. And uh, so it's important at this time to be able to receive from God revelation and prophetic wisdom so that you can be able to wage your war. Glory to God. Uh, you know, some of the strategies that we may need in our day, I'm going to mention a few of them and then I'm going to share this a little later. Uh, every ministry that is going to succeed in this hour needs these strategies. Number one needs visionary leadership. You need a uh, uh, visionary leadership means there is a vision articulated very clearly and then there's a leader that is preparing that vision. That's important. Those two aspects of visionary leadership is important in this hour, that there is a vision and there is a, a person leading that vision who is working out with others so that there can be a very powerful waging of war in the ministry, glory to God. So for instance, I need to ask, uh, what vision are you carrying on, carrying out now? Who is the leader of that vision right now? You need to lay your hand strongly on that uh, strategy because it's important. Secondly, um, there needs to be a pattern uh, of what you intend to do. There needs to be a pattern, a plan. How do you implement that vision? Glory to God. So if your vision is uh, preaching the gospel, uh, you know, in the nations of the world. You need to have a pattern. What is the pattern of doing missions to the nations? How do you establish your communication? How do you establish your plans for travel, you know, and so forth? And uh, how do you behave yourself in the mission field if you are missionary at that level? If you are a pastor in the local church, you need to have a pattern. How is pastoral ministry done? And that's where education and going to school and Bible training is important and where you cannot have access to that. Train yourself under other successful pastors, and then you can learn how things are done, how to deal with finances, how to deal with, you know, plans in the church and programs, how to deal with, with uh, controlling, you know, uh, so that you don't overspend or you don't, you know, divert your attention and your energy, and how do you work with others. Uh, these are very 
powerful plants and uh, how do you ensure that the church is feeding spiritually you know and that they are not malnourished and they are receiving the accurate word of God you know and the other thing that is important is gathering resources how do you gather resources because these are strategy resources have to be gathered to fulfill that vision and that mission you know and the greatest resource listen the greatest resource you have and we need in ministries not money the greater resource you need is people well trained people well equipped people and that's why as a leader in the ministry you have to equip other people with the word of God so they can be strong and they can be you know greatly empowered because these people are the greatest resource that's number three number four um, then identify out of those people who are these helpers of destiny people can be able to take strategic places and positions <coughs> out of the people you excuse me out of the people you train people can be specifically given specific tasks so that they can do things uh, for you as it were this is a process of delegation you know because you are developed relationships in place and these people are related with you and they have your heart they have your spirit and they are committed to god they are committed to you they are loyal and then you can give them specific assignments they can handle glory to god and these are just four things i've said in the strategy it's important for us to consider that visionary leadership uh, the vision and the leader the pattern and plans you got to be specific and then you need to gather resources the greatest resource you need to gather are people and then you need to identify out of those people who can take specific roles so they can be your helpers because i tell you what the vision you carry you can never fulfill it yourself you need others to walk alongside you glory to god and so the lord bless you i just wanted to share that uh, short nugget Praise the Lord. Uh, we will be back uh, at 1.15 today of the lunch hour in Jesus' name. I want to pray for you and bless you. I want to declare the victory of the Lord over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't you just uh, stretch your heart and your hand as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessing of the Lord upon my viewer today. This apostolic nugget on matters strategy in life and ministry. I pray in Jesus' name that the man of God and the woman of God that is with me right now and those that are tuned in as even as believers, they shall not ground to a halt. But Father, they will put plans out of wise counsel. Now, not only wage war, Father, I pray, but they will also lead to prosperity and success. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning into this Apostolic Nugget. I wanted to sow a seed. I wanted to give an offering. I wanted to worship God with your giving. I wanted to give something in the presence of God. Listen, the ministry must continue. The work of God must continue. Grace of God must continue to be released. And you, too, are partakers of the grace of God. And the Lord bless you. So go ahead and give an offering. And for me, for now, it's bye-bye. And after the offering, then the program comes to a close. God bless you. We'll see you at 1 o'clock today in Jesus' name for the launch of our service. So, bye-bye.
ni mungu 